Hi everyone. So I'm doing a get ready with me today and um, I'm just going to get started. It's mostly new things that I haven't shown on the channel, though I probably have worn on Instagram if you want to see what I'm wearing pretty much daily. Follow me on Instagram, Pale and Freckled. And um, yeah, so I'm going to get started. I think it's the second time I've said that. This time I really mean it though. So since this uh, is pretty much empty, this is C0.5 of the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define, which has been my go-to primer for my eyelids. I'm mixing these two. I have C1 and C0, which is the white. And I've realized that my C0.5 was pretty dry because these are a lot, a lot creamier. So I think what I'm going to do is use a couple new shades of the JD Glow um, Multichromes. I did a little kind of slap together look. Um, it wasn't even a look. I was just trying to swatch all the shadows on my eyes and it got a little crazy. I went ahead and just put it up here on YouTube with like no information. Just some music and which shades I was using. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna put this in the crease. It's from ColourPop and it is, what is this? Howlin. It's a really, really pretty light purple. Anyway, so I swatched all the shades like on my fingers and also put them on my eyes. And some are easier to work with than others. They're definitely not the most practical um, shadows to work with unless you're going for something really dramatic because they do have kind of a black base to most of them. So if you try to blend them out at the edges, you're just going to get kind of a smoky black blend. Um, and I found that they applied best. I would do finger and then go over with a uh, wet brush. Not wet. Damp. I would get the shadow on the brush and then spray it. That seemed to give the most like really foiled metallic to show off the reflect the best. So I might just recreate kind of the look that I did on Instagram the first day I used these. Um, I feel like the shift on this one is the most notable um, other than the um shade, which I could do. Maybe I'll do that since I did wear this. I don't know if you'll be able to see the shift here. It's tricky. You have to get just the right angle in all this kind of artificial lighting. It's a lot easier to see in person and it's a lot easier to, I feel like, capture in natural light for a picture. I'm gonna go ahead and do the, what is this, um. I'm gonna put um, um on. This one's the easiest to work with. That and Money Moves, the kind of yellow gold, slightly greeny gold. This one's just. When I ordered it, I ordered it the, when it was initially released and it took about a month before I got it. It is a small company. So turnaround is going to be challenging, especially when I think they really got hyped up pretty heavily by some popular YouTubers. So probably added, you know, good for them. Lots of demand, which is awesome for a smaller business. Um, so they have a very, very cool product. So I'm just using um, Makeup Forever Mist and Fix. And uh, this is an e.l.f. C brush, going kind of old school. It feels like you're using like a pressed pigment as opposed to just a regular standard eyeshadow. I think I'm going to try going into the crease with this uh, purple shade. It is also from ColourPop and it's called Silver Lining silver lining. So this is a Laura Mercier detailed crease brush, I think. It came in a, a little set many years ago. And what a, it's a nice size. Um, and it keeps me from 
getting color it's like dense but it does blend and it keeps me from bringing the color up into my eyebrow I'm gonna go over to try to bring more purple back with the um, Howlin shade just so it doesn't look so gray I'm gonna have to probably take a powder foundation to clean up around the edges here because it's like when I'm looking straight onto my mirror here it's like green here and purple here kind of a bluey purple here it's so cool. I had a moderate amount of fallout here. Foundation today, I was kind of debating between the L'Oreal Infallible Fresh and the Tarte Face Tape. This is in a S Porcelain Sand. I decided to go ahead and go with this one just because um, Taylor used a darker shade, as I recall. She used either 12 or 16. Um, and so I wanted to get the kind of yellow undertoned, very fair shade out there on the internet for people to see. They can let me know if they uh, want to see an actual review. I think I am going to maybe try to do a wear test. So I'm going to take the um, e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer and I'm just going to do like half my chin. Um, when I've, I have worn this foundation once, but I don't really remember how it wore. On my chin is where things tend to break down and a primer like this or the Tatcha Silk Canvas can really help that. I might put a little bit on my upper lip as well. It's another spot where things just get really patchy and separated. And I did prep my skin for wearing a really matte foundation today. I was gonna wear the Jouer um, High Coverage Cream, which I've been testing the past several days. I have a sample of that one like two samples, but I decided probably people would rather see the a little bit newer of a product that there is a little bit more interest on. This does has a pretty strong fragrance that is similar to the, or is the same, uh, to the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer, which is unfortunate because I really dislike that smell. Oh, it reminds me of being pregnant with morning sickness, queasiness. Ugh. I, it's, it's really unfortunate because when I was pregnant, um, really the second and third times, makeup totally made me queasy and I considered stopping making YouTube videos like indefinitely because like I hated just sitting down to do my makeup even if I didn't use things that had a fragrance. Um, it made me queasy. Like doing my makeup made me queasy. I'm like, I'm not ever going to want to do this again. Fortunately, finally, after I had the children, like it was it, that, that feeling went away, but I used a few products. I tried to just kind of power through it and use stuff that had a fragrance that made me queasy. And then it just completely associated being queasy. Oh, chicken nuggets <laughs> with makeup in general. I feel like when I put it on my face, it looks like it's going to be a little bit darker, but um, then when I blend it out, like in certain light, I feel like it looks a little light, though I don't think it is. I think it's a good color. Man, this is going to be a look today. It's a little more coverage than I normally would do. Mm, I still see some fallout there. I don't know if it's like continuing to drop down or what. What would make sense, maybe, is the Tarte Shape Tape and Porcelain Beige 8B. I don't know if they have an 8S Porcelain Sand in the shape tape but this was a lighter shade that was added the lightest shade used to be fair which um, oxidizes a lot so that on when I wear it with my really pale foundations you can see that it's darker like it's noticeably <laughs> darker I feel like this one doesn't oxidize as much um, on my eyes and also in swatches like on my arm. It doesn't oxidize as much. It does oxidize but not not as drastically as the fair does. I 
I don't want more coverage. I just don't want it to look so gray because I think there might have been some fallout still that it mixed with to make it look a little gray. My favorite um, under eye slash all over setting powder is the Stellar, um, Stellar Cosmic Face Haze Finishing Powder, not the setting powder, the finishing powder. It comes in one shade, this haze. It looks like it has a little bit of a kind of pink uh, lilac tone to it, though I don't find it really translates to the skin. Um, this works as well as the NARS Light Reflecting Setting Powder Pressed, but I think this will last me a lot longer because uh, I got through that pressed powder really quickly. Like I've already hit pan and I repurchased that just a few months ago. You know, I've got a fair amount of lines and creases and whatnot under my eyes, and this powder and the NARS powder will keep it from creasing all day and will keep it smooth looking all day and keep it from looking dry. So it will look just as good or even a slightly better throughout the day, 13, 16 hours. Those two powders, if you have dry, creepy, crinkly under eyes and you're struggling with powders, making them look more dry, um, definitely recommend these. And this is vegan and cruelty free, which is a great option. All right, so do I need to set this? Hopefully not. I don't think so. I think this is fully set down. <laughs> I love a foundation I don't have to set because my skin just gets really heavy looking. It accentuates the, the kind of looser skin, <laughs> makes me look older, etc. I'm 39, so most of my skin is very dry and then I have kind of slight oil through the T-zone. Um, I feel like my skin's in a really good spot right now. I've really nailed down a skincare routine, hopefully, that is not causing breakouts but is also not um, super dry. I think on my lower lash line, I'm just gonna do the purples so that I don't have to worry about dealing with the fallout on my lower lash line from the duochrome. Not sure what I'm gonna do with my inner corner yet. Since all these duochromes have a darker base, I'm hesitant to put anything in my inner corner from this collection. All right, now I'm gonna go in with the uh, Sephora Matte Perfection 02 Neutral Porcelain um, up around my brow bone just to bring the shadow down a little bit so it's not so close to my eyebrows. And oftentimes I don't get foundation or concealer like right up in here and so this is also good for adding some coverage and um, it also mattifies it a little bit. What I would like to do is get a lighter shade of this because when it's working well it's pretty dark. This is spiked MAC shape and shade um, and I think I think I would actually like something lighter. I could do purple blush. This is a limited edition Lorac um, color source buildable blush in Panorama. This was in the I Love Brunch collection. <laughs> I thought I was supposed to be going a little more subtle on everything else. A pastel purple blush probably is not the most subtle thing in the world. All right, so we decided no, no highlight, but I do want to do some inner corner, something or other. So this is the Ofra Everglow. Um, so it's all three shades just in one little compact. I know that they have in their repackaged thing, they have the Nikki Tutorials Everglow like trio, all separate highlights, but I kind of love this because I don't go to my highlight palettes nearly as often as I go to an individual highlight. I like to take this kind of far out here 
just because for me that's a pretty dark place <laughs> um, in my eye shape and that will help not look like I'm scowling as much and um, just open things up. So this sample is almost dried out, but I wanted to show it on camera once before I finished it. It's the Milk Kush Mascara. Um, I have been enjoying this a lot. This was the, I picked this as my little birthday um, sample from Sephora. And I got it with that little hydrating under eye thing, which I don't really feel one way or the other about. I've only used it a few times. I feel like it doesn't sit under makeup all that great. Granted, I have very um, picky under eye skin, so that's not really saying anything about the product. It's just not the best fit for me. But I feel like this does add a little bit of length to my lashes. My lashes are pretty long on the longer side, um, especially with my eye shape, just because like I have my camera tilted up from an angle down a little bit, just because it's a little more flattering. So when I'm looking in the camera, I don't like my head is probably back a little bit. So, um, but if I'm looking straight on and I open my eyes all the way, my lashes are up in my eyebrow, like I can feel them in my eyebrows. So lashes are already pretty long but I feel like this adds a little bit of length and it does have fibers in it most fiber mascaras uh, really irritate my eyes and they often flake on me and this one doesn't irritate my eyes and it doesn't flake so I've really enjoyed this I don't think I would pay full price but I would think about it like I would think about buying it during the sale one of the Sephora cells because it is nice my lashes are up like more into my eyebrows than they normally would be. I'm just going to go ahead and do some setting spray. Mm -hmm. If you could go in kind of heavy with Makeup Forever Mist and Fix, it can actually add a little bit of a sheen. I'm using the Clinique High Impact Mascara. I feel like it's just easy to control under my eyes. I don't have issues. I don't have issues with um, transfer of mascara basically ever. So saying I don't have transfer issues is not really notable. A lot of times I miss the, oh. <laughs> All right, once this is dried, we'll scrape it off with a spoolie. Um, I'll just think about what uh, I wanna put on my lips in the meantime. Oh, no, I've got brows. I can do my another new thing this is the anastasia dip brow gel oh my gosh it doesn't say anywhere yeah it only says in teeny teeny tiny desk text on the label so this is medium brown i'm not sure why i picked this shade but when i was looking online to see what colors were available for some reason i thought medium brown would be the best choice um it is kind of a cooler tone shade the spoolie on this is not super tiny it's not like a Gimme Brow or, um, uh, what else has that size? A lot of things have that size. So, uh, I was concerned that, you know, they're saying like ultra pigmented, oh, that I was going to make a mess, which I am currently doing right now. I was concerned I was going to make a mess like on the skin, but actually it's not so bad. My favorite spoolie is the Brow uh, Elf $1 spoolie. Good gracious, I have not had that kind of mess up in a long time. All right, I'm gonna try to pack on some powder foundation and cover that up. Let's see if we can touch up with the foundation just a, a smidge. That was interesting. You can still kind of see it, but now it kind of looks like a freckle that I've gone over. So, um, I just don't know what to do for lips like usual. I don't know if they still sell this in the US. It's the Essence Sheer and Shine in uh, Cute Nude, right? Yeah, Sheer and Shine lipstick in Cute Nude. This has been kind of my go-to lighter 
pink kind of cooler works with cooler makeup looks this this hair man all right so i think that's it let me know if you have any questions or comments about the stuff i've used if you've tried any of these out how they work for you what shades skin types all that stuff is super helpful if um i notice anything like notable about the foundation happening and i have the time i will do a check-in later otherwise we'll say just end it here If you want to see more videos from me, please do subscribe if you're not already. Turn on the bell if you want a notification whenever I post a new video. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I'll see you soon.